Have you ever thought about starting your own business, but were afraid of some of the fears like feeding and supporting your family or what you're going to do if you quit your day job? Well, I'm excited today to have a guest that's gone through those steps and can ease some of our fears. So stay with us as we discuss transitioning from your day job to your own business. Darren, welcome to the show. Hi. Oh, Mike. Hi. Glad to have you. I'm excited to hear your story and how you went from working for somebody else for 12 years to transitioning mm -hmm. to doing some stuff on the side at night mm -hmm. and eventually owning your own business. So, right. so thanks for coming. Welcome. Yeah. So let's uh, let's go back in time a little bit. So you spent 12 years in in private industry as a mental health counselor, mm -hmm. and so what brought you into that field to begin with? Let's start there. As a, as, a as a counseling field yeah. in the first place. So I I never have a good answer, but basically I I took a psychology class in college at UVU, and it was really interesting. And then I took another one, and I just thought it was cool. Yeah, that's uh, like we said before, we discussed this a little bit and we have those teachers and role models in our lives, right, that kind of make a difference and some of them stand mm -hmm. out more than others and it sounds like the, right. this one stood out to you and really made an impact. Yeah, so Norma Gould was the teacher and she was a therapist as well as a professor. So she would tell a lot of stories from our practice that, that were, you know, real life things besides just from the book. And we all loved it. It was like story time. So that was cool. And um, I took her for any class I could because she was really motivated, you know, me. And that helped me get a passion for it. So, Yeah, I've had similar experiences where uh, people that have been in industry, right, and then come to teach are always more interesting than those that have just been in academia the whole time. I would agree because they have those real life experiences <laughs> right. and kind of get a glimpse of what you might see in the industry mm -hmm. and i remember one one of my teachers in high school he was a, a part-time mayor for for a small city wow. so we, we'd spend half the lecture time just asking him questions about politics and and mayor, mayor stuff to and that's of, fun <laughs> i know it was a lot More of fun. fun we didn't get much science done but it was <laughs> it was a lot of right. a real life uh, questions mm -hmm. Okay, so you moved in into the, the private industry and counseling mm -hmm. for 12 years. And what prompted you to think about doing this on your own or opening your own yeah. clinic? Yeah. So the place I was was, a, it was actually public, but it was just a, a counseling center. And I was there as an employee, you know, 12 years, learning a lot about therapy. Um, but, you know, it was just a position that didn't go anywhere else. You're, you're a therapist and, and you stay 30 years and then you retire. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I wanted to advance somehow a little more than that. Um, <clears throat> I honestly, you could say I, I was tired of being poor. <laughs> <laughs> so it can be a good motivator. <laughs> social work isn't the most biggest paying field, right? And so, honestly, that was a little bit of the motivation. But um, I just started out saying, I'm just going to work at both. I'm going to work in the day there, and I'm going to do this in the evening, a night or two. And just start a private practice, my own thing, and like try to see how, how that works. So take me through the steps of that. Did you just rent out a room somewhere in a commercial building, or what did you do? Yeah. So uh, the town I'm from, there's not a lot of office space and, and I wanted to do it from my own city. So I looked, there was nothing, nothing. Uh, there, there was a handful of offices and they were all full. So every once in a while I would look again every few months and one day I went in and asked this guy, I said, hey, do you have any um, hours you're not using it? I could just sublease. And he's all, no, but come with me. I'm like, okay. We walk down the hall. He goes, someone over here has a, has a little room. And he took me in 
And she was there and said, hey, this is Darren. He's looking for space. I thought you might have one. And she, she goes, yeah, we just use it for a closet. Um, and they took me in. And I'm just like, this would be awesome. This little therapy room, you know. And they didn't even use it. So she said, you can, you can go ahead and use that. And we'll just charge you like by the hour that you're in there. Awesome. $10 an hour. <laughs> no way. I'm like, is this really happening? I'll take it. <laughs> so that was a dream, you know. And so I didn't even have to pay when I wasn't in there. I love it. So I could be there one night and just pay a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. Couldn't have gotten a better deal, right? No. So. Uh, well, nice. I love that story because if you hadn't had asked that person, right, you never would have gotten the, the connection to the, to the lady that had right. the room, right? So, yeah. and, and that's a story that, that I've found in my life has happened a lot. Like, you have to ask. And when you ask, mm -hmm. doors, doors come open. And, yeah. Right. And if they don't, you just ask somebody else, and then it opens eventually. I think that's a key with, <laughs> with our topic today, right? I think it's a key to starting a business or something is to be positive and to keep trying and, um, you know, door slam, but keep going. It's, it's not easy. So that is a key. Yeah, don't Keep go positive. In, don't go into it, and I, I think most people realize that going into business that it's not easy, and that's why mm -hmm. they don't make that transition because they have a lot of these fears. And so let's let's talk about mm -hmm. those. So, you know, when when you started getting clients, uh, I'm assuming you had to go through the marketing and and all that stuff. So talk a little bit about that. How how did right. you get clients? And um, you probably couldn't take them from your day job, right? Is no, a conflict no, of interest there's a conflict. Um, so. I didn't know how to do that, you know. I, I knew how to do therapy, but I didn't know how to do business, business or marketing. Sure. So I had a friend who was a therapist who was doing it on the side. So I called him up. I wrote down everything he said, and I did everything he said. And he, he told me a little bit about marketing and a little bit about, you know, billing and insurance and, like, a lot. So that helped. Um, but essentially, I was open for a, any kind of client. So I, I got on insurance companies that um, didn't pay very much, but that they were um, easy to get on or, or, or they'd have lots of referrals. And I did like EAPs. So employee assistance yep. programs. Okay. Yeah. So they, with, they with companies um, in the area. Um, or just there's just general? certain EAPs and you never know where they're coming from. But, you know, it didn't pay very much, but it worked. That was my marketing. I mean, obviously it worked. And I think mm -hmm. that's a key for a lot of businesses is getting people in the door. And then once they're in the door, you get those, you know, referrals to word of mouth mm -hmm. type things. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So cool. Yeah, I like it. So then, so you got the referrals and the clientele, and w was you were you just getting overwhelmed with too many appointments? What happened next? Eventually, right. So, at first, I was I was doing one night a week, four sessions, and you know that worked. Then I would get a little uh, another call here or there, more clients. So I said I'll open up Tuesdays, and then I was doing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights for like five hours a night, <laughs> and that was after working all day. And so it was tiring, getting to be tiring. Um, so yeah, I was getting too much to do both. Gotcha. So what? Where was the transition point for you? What? When did you decide? Okay, I'm going to take this a leap of faith. I know this is working, and hopefully it'll scale bigger where I can actually support my family. Mm -hmm. but where was that tipping point at for you, and how did you make that decision? I think it, I'm just kind of thinking on that. Um, so I was, so I was all I was full in the evenings, but they also had someone call me, um, a therapist, and he said, "I'm I'm working on licensure. I need supervision. Would you be willing to ha let me come work with you, and you could do my supervision, and and I could um, I know a little about marketing, and I I could help with that." And I was like, "Oh, I don't know." Like an employee, I don't even know what that means. Right, that's a whole another can of worms to open. Yes, it's a whole another, and so I didn't want to do that. Um, it just sounded scary and strange, and so I thought about it, and I, 
I, I met with him. He kind of convinced me even more. And I said, okay, well, what do I have to lose? Like, I'll see if I can get you some clients, but I can't even guarantee that. And let's just go ahead. So, so I hired him and he was amazing. He was there for years. And, um, and then he went off and started his own. And I was like, awesome. good, good luck, good power, power too. And so he was a catalyst for one. And he started taking more clients even than me. I mean, he was really full. And um, so now we're using up the room day and night, you know. So he was there in the day when you were at your day job. Yep. Okay. And this is a little, no bigger than this. This is about maybe 10 by 10 room, uh, teeny. And so that was his max, right? And then he's full, I'm full, and I'm exhausted from working all day, and I'm and someone else um, we hired, <laughs> actually two more people. And the, the room, same room. <laughs> room was minute, minute by minute booked up. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. There's, there's, there's nowhere else to go. I looked around and um, there's no- uh, There's no office uh, space op available. Nope. And so I didn't think there was anything I could do. And then one day I'm like, I'll just look around. I, I've called kind of the real estate guy and he said, there's nothing. So I just said, well, I'm just going to go. So I walked up to the two buildings up and I said, Hey, is there any, um, even sublease space or anything? And she goes, but well, we have a suite upstairs that's open. I'm like a suite. Okay. Can I look at it? And she goes, sure. She walked me up there and she goes, here it is. Um, some people just left and it's open and I'm like, this is huge. You know, like rooms, lots of rooms, a reception area. And I'm just like, how much is it? And she's like, it's 2,500 a month. I'm like, I, I do $10 an hour. Yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> um, I don't, it's a lot I, of clients. <laughs> I just said, sorry, um, thanks. And I left and, and then I thought about it and talked to my wife. And I think what we realized was that's the going rate that's it wasn't more than the market else. rate sure and you either play the game or you don't play the game so i was like oh my heck that's double you know i don't i can't make that payment but i said we either take the lease move over there and try to go full speed leave my day job or we just keep doing what we're doing forever so we just decided to do it. Just took that. It that was leap, terrifying. Huh? So I want to dive into this a little bit, at least on on the family side. So what what role did your your wife and any other family members play in helping you make this decision? And were they yeah. supportive? Not supportive? Did you have to have the this conversation? I'm sure multiple times. My wife was more than supportive, and she helped a ton. I, when we first started, she held the phone, took all the calls, it was up front, uh, helped me with all the decisions. Um, basically, me and her were running this. So she was highly involved. She's still involved. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of support from her. Good. Yeah. Helped decide to do this, leave, leave. A job. I think that's a big that's a big key that you know some people are more risk adverse than others and may not be too comfortable with leaving the security of you know a, a day job that has all those benefits right you got your health insurance that's a big thing especially nowadays and mm -hmm. like what what do you do if you've got kids that that are sick that mm -hmm. have to go to the hospital and You've got your own business mm -hmm. now, so you have some different kind of health insurance. So can you talk about that? Did you have that, those questions or fears and how oh, did you overcome those? It was almost the number one. So we were thinking if we leave, we, to make it work, we would have to have this many hours of therapy session a week and not just to give our pay, but to equate for the, the pension they were having and, and the benefits and the leave time and the um, health insurance and paid holidays, all the stuff we had, right? 
So calculating it, it, it was like a fortune you'd have to make oh, to probably cover. Probably twice much or three right. times as much as your salary for all yeah. the benefits, right? Yeah. And that's just doing it on paper. <laughs> Reality was worse. <laughs> <laughs> So how, how so? Uh, just uh, just them. take health insurance. If uh, w with my job it was a benefit, we paid a couple hundred a month or something, but it was mostly paid for. So we figured health insurance to get our own uh, marketplace, you know, would be maybe more three or four hundred, right? So it's based on income. So if you are starting and you have a lot of expenses and low revenue, it's like free, which it was. This is what the Affordable Care Act yeah. plan? Okay. They're very cheap, you know, a hundred bucks a month or something. It's income based. Uh -huh. But as soon as your business starts working, it's thousands of dollars a month sure. for health insurance. <laughs> So you want your business to thrive, and then on the other hand, your expenses are going to go up, especially in the healthcare. Right. So just if you uh, if your business does what you're hoping it does, then you know to go out and buy insurance for a family. We have five ki kids. Is you know easy fifteen hundred or more if you want a better plan. <laughs> so so we didn't predict that. <laughs> but you got through it, obviously. Yeah. So let's talk about the the money part. So you, you've got this lease that has a staggering number compared to the income that's coming in at mm -hmm. the time. Uh, how did you overcome that or figure out a way to to make that work? Yeah. So at the very beginning, we had not much revenue. We were trying to market, but you know, not enough to pay employees or us. We didn't pay ourselves anything. And we just thought about that lease payment. Can we get the lease? Can we get the lease? And so we didn't have enough. So we got a, a loan, um, a business loan, and that wasn't really very big. So we had our house, so we took an equity loan out actually. And that was our basically startup business loan. So we we were paying the lease with the loan each month on your home equity loan. Yep. So we didn't even make enough to pay it. So. So you're you're pretty much all in at this point. It sounds all like in. yeah, you've <laughs> you've quit your day job at this point, mm -hmm. and you've got a home equity loan out, and you're still paying your mortgage. You're still trying to figure out how to pay health care and scary. and food and expenses and all that. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that I'm sure that had to be. How did you overcome some of those fears or challenges? Did you just just work through mm -hmm. it? Just do the Nike motto, just do it? I, I think we knew it was coming. And we even talked at a meeting with our family. We were like, you guys, this is how it's going to be. Um, we're not going to go on vacation this year or anything like that. We're not going to have any money. Don't ask. I tried to make it comforting. I drew this chart and I said, we're here. It's going to go like this. <laughs> See but this then big dip? <laughs> it's going to go up. And we think it could even go up here. Mm -hmm. So don't be scared. Be prepared. So so you set the expectation up front yeah. with your family. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I like that plan. That's, <laughs> especially having the graph, right? Like we're here. We're, we're gonna, this is going to suck for a few months, maybe a year, or maybe even longer. Who knows? Right. And then it's going to start coming up, and hopefully we'll be... <laughs> you know twice as much or more than we started so you hope hoping right yeah that's mm -hmm. great i like i like that visual okay so let's go back to the business so you've got the lease now with this home equity loan and how many employees do you have at this point i I'm, i think we had like let's see um like i think five therapists we, we got a couple more so we had five therapists because we put the position out and we hired and we're like we need help i was doing as many sessions as i could and trying to run all this and the business side yeah uh -huh. so so we realized that <clears throat> it couldn't be just me i couldn't just go do tons of sessions and work all day and and make yeah, the sure lease or whatever exhausted too it would have to be employees and contributing to the you know 
amount of work. So, I'm trying to remember what your question. <laughs> so yeah, no, I was asking how many employees there were. Oh, yeah. So did you did you discuss like a fee for service model or a salary model? How did you come to that decision and that type of thing? So just talking with my therapist friend who who was doing this, uh, it made more sense to do a fee for service. So the therapists weren't paid on the hour; they were paid per therapy session. Per so they'd come in, they would do it and leave pretty much. If they didn't have anything to do, they're not sitting around. And and they were fine with that and and we we didn't have we couldn't offer benefits. So we off, we paid a little more than another place that had benefits. Sure. So that they were happy and um it was fee for service. But I'm sure on the business side, that saved you money, right? With the benefit, not not offering the benefits from a salary, but you could pay a little bit extra on the hourly side right. of things. So benefits are like very expensive, sure, to offer, and so I mean it wasn't even an option, but it it worked out. So take so take me through those you know first six months or a year once you moved into this place and you kind of had a legit. A clinic it sounds like yeah. uh, well, take me through what what that was like and some of the the ups and downs okay so first of all it was a suite it had two rooms in it and the rest was wide open <laughs> 1200 square feet of nothing as far as us it was wasted right space. yeah so we're like we're gonna use up the rooms but eventually i'm like what can we do and we asked the landlord when we first signed up, we said, can we put walls in? Yeah, sure. And they Make said we rooms. could. But then when it was time, we're like, we have, we have a little bit of funding. <laughs> can we put a wall? And they said, no, we're, we don't want walls. We're like, what? So like, you didn't get it in writing and it was just a verbal? I guess. I don't even know what how it didn't work. But So I kind of went back and I talked to the person above them and eventually we agreed that I could do temporary walls that could be removed later mm. so I found some company that makes them and we ordered them and they brought them out in a semi and then now we're doing I'm a construction worker <laughs> so we put up these walls made more rooms uh, they worked we put therapy couches and chairs in them and we had more Space. so we kind of had to grow the building to what we needed um, and then and then and then we had a we had a, I, I figured out that if we don't have someone to answer the phones a missed call is a missed client sure that's money down the drain right yeah so we can either try to get the phone in between sessions and stuff and never get full or we could hire a receptionist, which is money that, you know, they don't produce any money. <laughs> well, yeah, they can't, they, when they're taking a call, they, they can be producing money, I guess, in that yeah. sense. Yeah, but they're not going to bring in revenue of any form. Right, the other will. than that, yeah. And so <clears throat> we just thought, let's see what happens, if my theory is right. We'll hire someone, and even though we have to pay them, and it worked. So we hired someone, it wasn't full-time, but several hours a week they would take the calls we got a lot more clients um because we didn't miss calls and so that helped so it was kind of nice because there was already a built-in reception area that came with the suite with the suite nice so they sat there and did that that was helped everything move um having more rooms helped and then we would get to where we could we'd get full and we could hire another person and another person um right now we have 13 therapists there so we'd eventually get full we'd hire one a little they'd get full we felt like we could add another one and we would do that i mean this is a side note but the key to all that was marketing which we had to learn <laughs> okay so uh, so let's dive there first so i just want to ask one one question what do you think the percentage went up of your clientele once you hired made that investment in the receptionist 
just to like a ballpark estimate how many more mm -hmm. <clears throat> was it like a 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent more more it, uh, it's probably like astronomical more than that really because if if we would call when we had a chance you know that's a minute here and a minute there the phone got to be where it would ring every day and a lot of the day so if we weren't there we would have missed them all missed people them all. people just go down the list if if you don't answer sure yeah so so it's hard it's hard to tell but you could probably honestly say that mm -hmm. that whatever money you paid for this receptionist for probably for like the week salary was probably made up in maybe a day oh yeah and, it was totally worth it yeah for sure cool mm -hmm. and i think this this hits on a topic where sometimes we don't we're in this mindset mm -hmm. where we're down here and we're looking at like a step up instead of like 10 steps up and we say okay this is so much more money you know the suite the $2,500 for the mm -hmm. suite and the extra what, whatever $100 a day for the receptionist but really you know those investments can bring us up to such a high level that right. sometimes we need to look at the the real big picture right so right so i i always think of whatever money i put into the business is an investment sure it's not like um spending or an expense i'm kind of growing this machine and so it's not painful to put that money there because I know it's going to lead somewhere. But without that business mindset and making that transition is, I think, mm -hmm. tough for uh, like myself or somebody else mm -hmm. that's starting a business saying, man, this is a lot of money. But if you don't have that investment and the mindset, then I think that's key just to say, mm -hmm. you know, this is going to grow. It's just going to take a, a little bit more time than, than right. I might be expecting. And kind of with that, I think it's, I think it's better to not be in a race um to just get a giant loan and hire a ton of people and buy a bunch of supplies and like just put yourself in a bind real fast um at least that's what we did we we started we we got our therapy couches from garage sales <laughs> and uh sure, whatever we could we, we didn't have a loan at first we would just buy a thing or an item and so we were never really in debt until we did the big switch and um just i think if you grow it inch by inch it's safer uh, yeah i think we get stuck in this mindset where we see all these silicon valley startups that get all this venture capitalist right and <laughs> they get all these millions of dollars and it's silly and then they're not profitable, right? They go several years and they're still not profitable. And mm -hmm. and so you, you've got that, the, that end of the spectrum on the technology end. But if you go back a hundred years, right? This is this grassroots thing. This is how people started businesses. And I, that's why I really liked your story because you'd okay. gone back to kind of the roots of of what, what I would call kind of logical, smart uh, business startup where you start small and then you grow it from there so start small yeah prove your concept small and then scale it mm -hmm. it sounds like that's what you did and i think i don't think you can learn all you need to know overnight uh so we, we learned a lot along the way um, while it was smaller so then as it got bigger um we knew how to handle that um little lessons you know I think if we try to do overnight, you couldn't have got all those lessons and it would have been a problem. Yeah, and the, the repercussions would have been at a bigger scale too, right? So right. If, when you're learning and going through these mistakes at a smaller scale, it's just like you know learning as a human being when you're small and little and you're falling, it doesn't hurt as much as when you're an adult and falling down. And, yeah. and so I think it's the same concept here where you mm -hmm. get, the, get the kinks out early and then later on you're not going to have those those mistakes so right so i really like that mm -hmm. so let's go let's go back to to the marketing piece what what can you tell us about marketing how'd you learn that and how did it help your business grow it's hard to say anything else matters more um 
marketing, I think people, it's a yucky sounding word because uh, cause they think of sales or, or I don't know what, but the door, the door to door salesman uh-huh, <laughs> are just uncomfortable. Um, but all it is, is letting people know you're there and you have a product or a service. I mean, that's all you're doing is saying, letting people know. I love, I love that definition. You're, near, you're <laughs> nearby and you We're here. have something. Yeah. So you have to do that. Everyone has to do that. Um, so it's not a bad thing. And if, if, if it isn't working, then nothing's going to work. Um, so I, w as we were trying to grow up, um, there was times where we were doing, we were pretty full. And then there's times where it would dip and we'd be, wouldn't have very many work and we would get real nervous and we have employees wanting work. So it was cyclical. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. And, and it was really scary. So in my mind, I had a switch and it was the marketing switch. And I would say, we're going to turn the marketing switch on and I'm going to be a marketing maniac, <laughs> which I was, um, anything you could do, I would do. I, I was in the city parades, handing out flyers and candy. That's one way, right? Uh, we were putting up posters around, um, just anything. So we had a website, tried to get that to work. Um, then eventually we got Facebook, um, insurance, we got an insurance panel. So then that's marketing. Sure. Um, but I would just do free classes to the community okay. for, on parenting or something. And just so people could know we're there and the switch was on and we would do, uh, I, I put logos in my car and the windows, whatever. And I don't know if it was all very effective, but I didn't care. It's like the switch is on. Yeah. We're doing every form. Just do it. Yeah. And so that's what I did. And then when we got full and we were starting to turn people away, we would switch it off. <laughs> so that's at least what we had to do at the beginning. Um, learn a lot about marketing. So what, what were some of the resources that you went to to learn about marketing? Okay, so it was cool, and they probably have this everywhere. Um, there was the um, Chamber of Commerce, chamber of Commerce for uh -huh. the local, and they had meetings, and I'd go to all those, and they would network, but they would usually do like a training each month, and a lot of times it was something about marketing or, or social media marketing, or, and they'd have an expert come and teach us. So I'd go to all those. So that was a really good. Um, in Utah here, there's a small small business development center. Mm -hmm. And that was huge. You could go there and meet with someone. They could analyze what's going on and give you advice. Plus they have all these classes and you could go to those and learn. Yeah, and they're free too. Everything, it's all free. <laughs> Yeah, it's, a, it's been a good resource for me just to figure out mm -hmm. how to start a business and some of the steps through it. And I think what, what I like about it the most is the people that are there, a lot of them are volunteers, just yeah. small business owners themselves or have mm -hmm. retired or have been successful in their own business. But and they so, have knowledge. So this goes back to the whole teacher thing, being in the mm -hmm. field, like you've got these teachers that have been there and that can mm -hmm. really give you that real world advice. Yeah, I'd, I'd go to the consult and just pad and paper everything they said. I went home and did all of it, and it was really helpful. Cool. I, I figured like they knew what they were talking about. Yeah, yeah, right. Yep. Okay, so you got you got the marketing down now, and at what point did you? Were you ever skeptical in your decision that first six or, you know, nine months a year? Like, what the heck am I doing? What did I get into? Like, take take us through some of those fears and, and how you overcame them. It was definitely terrifying because there's no money. There's no paycheck. Um, so it's all for going a while. Back, it's all going back in the business. Just to keep just it. Just the expenses. Uh, payroll. Okay. You know. Yeah. So... Um, it was so really you're scary. using your sorry to interrupt. So you're using your home equity loan uh -huh. to pay the payroll. Well, there was some money, right? There was some, but it just went out. Just not enough. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, 
it was really scary and um i always figured it would take some time so i wasn't too worried that it would never work but a lot of days i would just say when is it gonna happen mm -hmm. um, i'm putting in the work here like uh -huh. uh, i'm trying to get over this hill where is the light at the end of this tunnel and i'll give my wife props she really never um said that we've tried long enough this is stupid she just hung in there so that was cool um so a lot of times sometimes i would get to where i some point you have to cut your losses right if we're doing this for a year year and a half to however long it was going um and it's not even equal to what you had before um it's like this has to happen something has to change or just honestly we need to not do this we're done yeah so i thought that a few times and, and oh, it was a worry so uh, how long did it take before you finally got to the point where you're like okay this is working we can go forward i can breathe a breath of fresh air that mm -hmm. i'll be able to support my family on this and we're not going to be homeless or without health care and all that stuff what, yeah. what where was was there a turning point that you can remember uh, it's hard to remember dates and times but it was probably around a year i mean it's not that we didn't have food like we were we were using on the, the loan we were alive um but around a year was probably where one day we didn't have to take any money from the bank we we could just pay everything with what was um coming in your income met your expenses yeah. for the month or whatever yeah. time period it was like wow that's different so around a year maybe but um that was really fun um just to break even sure I'm and a, that's a payroll big win. we have we have enough and now it's payroll oh, we'll just go pay payroll and i was like this is nice i mean it wasn't like enough that your goal but it was it's nice. still a big it's a big milestone in on and on it business, was huge. right it was huge when you've made all this investment and in time and, mm -hmm. and money and energy and yeah. and not just yours but the the employees that you have too yeah. so you've got a lot of stress that way too to see that it's viable uh -huh. and that the income meets the expenses is a big it's, it a, needs it's a big to be achievement viable. yeah uh, you, now that you mentioned employees i remember a little frustration <laughs> where I would write payroll and pay everyone and just think everyone else is getting paid and I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Everyone else gets oh, on payday. Man. They get the penny amount of what they earned um, without fail. I never was behind on payroll. I didn't care if I had to suffer. And I remember just thinking, man, they get paid on, on that Friday but i don't <laughs> a year ago i was getting a paycheck like this and now it's like uh, 50 25 percent of what it used to be <laughs> so that was like hard to do <laughs> yeah i can imagine i can imagine that's tough so you get you get to this one year point where it's it's breaking even and what what happens next um uh we we just kept it was always up and down and so we just kept fine-tuning marketing and um we, we tried everything adwords you know all the stuff you try and eventually i don't know how we met oh playing basketball i, I play basketball tuesday thursday mornings and another guy um asked what i did or something and, and he said he does marketing i'm like we could use some of that need you, yeah and he's all well let's meet and he was a key so ever since uh he came in he goes i i just do a flat rate a month and i'm just gonna be your marketing consultant and and do this and i'm gonna get you your goals and whatever so he did um he had us doing stuff we never would have thought of um 
and helping us get reviews on Google. We didn't really do that before. And he's like, you gotta have them, mm -hmm. you gotta do this and you gotta do this. And he made us videos for our website of all each therapist talking about themselves and just a lot of stuff. SEO, which we weren't doing. So the marketing guy got our marketing into gear. And that's when you saw the business really take off? It made a big difference. Yep. And then we were you just always full. We, we had a waiting list and we were turning people away. Awesome. I like it. Yeah. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that I really like in that story. Uh, I guess I'd start with, you know, when, when we put our foot forward and work on a goal and move towards that goal, and even when we're suffering or think that it might not be the right path, and if we stick with that and share that goal or experience with, with other people, that there's people around us that help us, right? Yeah. And I think that's one thing that I've, I've learned is just to be open to the help that's around you instead of being this lone ranger, I'm going to do everything myself. There's people out there that have these skills in marketing that are a lot better than you. Right. And so, and they're willing to help too. That's the thing. Like they're yeah. willing to help you. And so I think that was key. Just, just making that connection. Yeah. And, um, there was another point that I can't remember now, but <laughs> well, I, I like what you said about use your support system, you know, yeah, either people, uh, professionally or just like fa friends, family, relatives. I, I had, uh, you know, my wife, my, my family supported us. I had a good friend who has been uh, in business his whole life. His dad had business and he's doing, and he had tons of advice. He really encouraged me uh, on the day, <laughs> this would make me cry, <laughs> on, on the day I left my business, he came and he brought balloons and all this stuff, him and his wife, and he's like, this is a great day. You're quitting your job, congratulations. It's a turning point in your life, right? And he recognized it because he'd been there. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he has, I could call him, I don't know what to do about this. He'd help me. So he was a huge support um, the whole way through. Yeah, I love sure. it. yeah, thanks for sharing that because, you know, we, we can't do this alone in anything in life, really, and we, this can lead right into the, the counseling part of this discussion and, and how important it is to, to share our feelings and our goals with, with other people mm -hmm. and, and how that can really, you know, magnify those goals and keep us uh, on the right track. I remember now what, what I was going to say. So mm -hmm. you were talking about running into somebody in basketball that had marketing skills. Um, I just uh, ran into somebody today and I told him I might be moving somewhere. And he's like, oh, I've got a contact there. You can talk to him about this. And he's got like two businesses. And like, nice. oh, what are the odds? Like, I just, uh, you know, and then, and, uh -huh. and the same guy I was talking about this podcast to, and he's like, oh yeah, I, I got this uh, contact that does podcast marketing and all this stuff. And so it's just, if you don't ask, then, then you'll never know. But right. like, like, like we talked about when you ask those doors will open and things just happen. So that's true. Networking and just, um, not being too proud proud yeah to, right uh, saying you're, you're keeping your humbleness and like man mm -hmm. i i really suck at marketing i could use some help <laughs> <laughs> right no that's true so let's let's lead into uh unless you, we're at the one year part part and your marketing starts going up and now how long did it take before you were making about the same as you were in your uh, nine to five job it's hard to say. I, I can't do time very good. I don't know. Probably another year. So maybe where it was point. Um, like smooth. Right. Constant. Um, and then that could be different for everyone. Sure. It's I'm not sure. going to always be two years, but um, yeah. And I mean, this is a lot about money. <laughs> it's numbers, right? Um, 
it's hard to say what was the same because once you're uh if you want to make it equal you gotta pay yourself well i mean enough and then you gotta have at least for me insurance paid for and some form of retirement i think is fair to give yourself sure um and maybe some days off in there somewhere yeah which you probably hadn't had in two years or however long not a lot right <laughs> Yeah, so you should give yourself all the things that someone who's employed gets and then say, you know, it's enough. So cool. I like it. So how long did it take before before you got your first vacation? So we didn't that first year. The second year, the funny thing is, is as it as it goes we had a lot of expenses right and we had basically small revenue so we got a giant tax return mm. you know it was like a net loss and sure. so we had this tax return so we're like we've been doing this and scrimping let's go on a cruise we've never been on a cruise so that was our first thing nice <laughs> we i like decided that. to I mean, do you've got to invest in yourself right especially when you've <laughs> gone through all that all that work and blood and tears all that stuff yeah <laughs> So I'd, I'd like to end on, on two questions. So number one, uh, if you could summarize to someone that's trying to start a business or has thought about starting a business, what's a, what's a good piece of advice you could, you could give them in 30 seconds? Okay. I would buy the book, The E-Myth. E-Myth, okay. First of all, which stands for The Entrepreneurial Myth. And it's... The best book if you're gonna go try to start a business um it's great it basically talks about how um you know you have a skill and so you figure why do i have to work for someone else i'll just go do my skill and get all the money or something and it says it's fine go ahead and go start your business but you gotta think um just because you have the skill doesn't mean you know how to run a business sure or how to market like all the stuff i've talked about so you gotta like think about that and plan for that the there's a lot about what the book says but it has really cool stories and examples and you found that to be helpful when you were yeah. starting your business yep it was great it's a very good one so there's one um i don't know i would say timing is kind of a big deal um i think it has to be the right timing in your life you mean or in the market um in in or your both, life probably both but. The, yeah <laughs> um but just that you're uh, know enough uh, expert enough at something first <laughs> sure right and um not just fresh out of college have your ducks in a row and stuff uh to to make it work i think if i think if you just say i have an idea i'm gonna go do it um really quick it, it might not go uh, I don't think my business would have worked five years before so yeah I really like that point because I've I found that to be true in a lot of aspects of my life right with this weight loss I had last year like just having you have to have a certain mindset that you're gonna commit to something and mm -hmm. there's certain points in our lives where we do have that mindset and when we don't right so we have some right. other things going on so we're ready to actually do it right so i really like that like the weight loss yep okay and then the other question that i want to ask is well, I've, I've already touched on this before but if somebody is going through some of these common things like depression anxiety or or other things where mm -hmm. they they feel like they need uh, they need help what what advice do you have for them i would say <clears throat> if you're noticing some of that symptoms and stuff um that you wanna it's really important to have a good fit if you're gonna go look for a counselor and i would say for one go to this website it's called psychologytoday.com and what i like about it is you put in your zip code and it's going to pop up all these counselors and it's going to be a bio and it's going to tell you about them 
and what they specialize in and if they take insurance or yours or whatever you can actually search by insurance it's the best place to find a counselor it's a big database of counselors uh -huh. in your area yep okay and you can learn about them before you even pick up the phone and make sure it's more what you're looking for because they're all very different sure and and they have a picture and everything so yeah and that's what your marketing guy did for you right yep <laughs> put your pictures and bios on your websites and so that's just website. a good way to like find one um i would say it's worth it even if it costs money and you find that if you if you give it a try i was uh at first this is a thing for businesses at first when i started it was hard for me to take people's money mm -hmm. it felt weird you don't have to do that as an employee and so i'm like okay the session's up you can write me a check, write me a check or now, run yeah. your card <laughs> and how much do i charge and it was kind of yucky and you know how i got over it i uh found pretty much one of the most expensive therapists i could back east over the phone and i paid him i think it was it was over 200 it was like it might have been 300 dollars and they were they weren't even hours they were 45 minute session so i called him i said i want to meet he said okay he's like we need the money first even and then i met with him for 45 minutes so i could cure myself of how, how am I, I doing a good enough job for this for this money is that what it comes well to? just that i could um um uh, paying that much for that many minutes it's it's uh just what it feels like from the client side sure so i wouldn't feel so bad about asking for 80. Oh, okay gotcha yeah <laughs> kind of thing and it was great uh he helped me a lot actually in the one visit <laughs> so you might be surprised how much worth it it is even even if it seems like a lot of money yeah, yeah and i was uh, you know i think one of the reasons i didn't go to counseling you know earlier than i did was i just assumed that my insurance didn't cover it oh and so you know i didn't even look into it so i i think that would be some advice that i'd give listeners that are thinking about right. it is just just look through your insurance give them a call and say you know i'm thinking about going to this counselor like do you cover it how much do you cover it how much is my copay going to be so you have a better idea yeah almost all insurances have a mental health benefit and it's the same as a doctor so if yep. you have a 20 dollars copay then the therapy is going to be 20 bucks yep so yeah insurance we we take all in, most all insurances and that's a benefit for people it's help it makes it easier yeah, and you talked about these classes, so g go into that a little bit. So if somebody really doesn't have the money or doesn't want to spend the money, you said you offered these free classes, or at least yeah. you did when you started. And and we do. So that even if a lot of places offer different classes, and even if they're not free, they're always a lot cheaper. So class, group therapy is in a less expensive way. Um, we, we have like a... A postpartum depression group support group uh, t every uh, every other Thursday and it's just free nice me. one of our therapists can't beat that guys it's free yeah so there's that and we do a, a free parent night parenting night one once a month it's live it's on Facebook you can just chime in um, but we also have some paid ones we have a teen group the next one's coming up um, in April and it's like 120 bucks and it's eight weeks long they they, they come every week for an hour uh, 11 whatever it's 14 through 17 is the age for that one and they're learning social skills and um, um, coping skills and emotional regulation just a lot of good stuff there's that's the type of groups that are out there I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I just remember there's one more question that I that we didn't get to, but I wanted to bring it up a little bit. So Adrian and I have been talking about this, you know, that these companies are going to kind of having fitness centers on site and uh, very nutritious cafeterias and they're taking care of people's physical health well, 
but it seems like there's a lack of the mental health uh, capacity and have you seen the industry kind of moving towards that where maybe some of these big corporations would have a therapist on site where their employees could get this maintenance or or baggage cleanup or thought process uh, have you heard anything about that or i think it would insight? be great I, I haven't seen it a lot where there's like a a therapist um they, they that's they could just set up an appointment and go mm -hmm. um but it, i think it's moving that way because uh most companies have EAPs it's called yeah, employee, employee assistance, assistance program mm -hmm. so they're basically saying you can call this number and go do a certain amount of counseling sessions like six or something for free it's not part of your that's insurance. actually how I got started when, when okay. I finally got a corporate job that had that EAP and then I knew that I had the, it covered so yeah so you don't have to pay anything for the EAP and then there's also um, you know you've probably heard of your boss telling you to take a mental health day if you mm -hmm. need yeah that's a, a phrase now um that it's like welcomed and like go ahead you know take a day off just because you need a break or want to go do something yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see that we've reached that point where mental health is as important as physical health. So. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, I see yeah. that. So where can people find you or reach out to you? Us? So eaglemountaincounseling.org, the website. Um, on Facebook, search Eagle Mountain Counseling. Instagram. Those are the main ways. <laughs> and you offer remote counseling as well, right? Yeah, so we have telehealth, and most insurances now cover that too. Great. So just log into this website. Your therapist is going to log in, and there you go. So even when you're it's on vacation video. or just yeah. traveling for work or whatever. Or you if can... you just don't want to come in out of your home. We, we often, if someone calls in and says they're sick or not feeling good or mm -hmm. something, we say if you want their telehealth and a lot of times they're able healthy enough that day that they can you know sit Get in front computer. of a laptop yeah. or just your phone okay so sometimes people end up doing that on the spur of the moment <laughs> yeah technology is great that we can do that yeah it? great that's good any other last words you want to yeah. leave with our listeners yeah. thank you yeah it's been fun i've really that's enjoyed good. it so i've i've I was looking forward to talking about the business side and overcoming some of your, your fears and how you got through them that are pretty yeah. common, I think, and then the the mental health side as well. So this is two topics that I'm really interested in is entrepreneurship and, nice. and health in general. So it's been great having you. Uh, listeners or viewers out there, if you're going through any PTSD, depression, anxiety, any other mental mental health concerns please go on to that website that he mentioned uh, psychology today was that it psychology today yep. find a counselor in in your area and like he said most health insurances cover mental health just like physical health which is something i didn't know you know 10 years ago before i started doing counseling so yeah thank it's you it's been great talking with you darren Thank you. Um, until next time viewers Thanks for watching this episode of a podcast with interesting people. I hope you've learned something about starting your own business and hope some of those fears have been diminished talking with Darren from Eagle Mountain Counseling. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about the mental health counseling services that he offers, please watch part two of this podcast and hit that subscribe button in YouTube and we'll see you next time. Thanks.